time of Terra Dominance that is, is over. <laughs> El Reality is 50 and 56. He's 3-3. Three and three. He played one Terran versus Terran in total this season, and he lost it. Very uh, unfortunate to note, but for him, he looks pretty cheery and ready to go. And there's not even anybody chatting to him right now because the game loading bar is up. He's just in a cheery mood for some reason. Yeah, this is, this is cool to see. It's good to have that kind of attitude going in. Oh, they're chatting again. I can't see what they're saying, but both of them uh, having a little fun. Here we have TY over here, one of KT Rolster's best players, a Terran player, 11 and 3. Very, very good ratio, and 3 and 1 versus Terran. Actually, a decent amount of TBT played here for this guy. Well, they're talking about some time going uh, out to each other, I think. They're maybe meeting each other in an ace match, it looks like. And, uh, well. Just making some jokes with each other. Looks like it's a continued conversation from earlier. Well, Merry Go Round is now part of WCS. The ladder season is live. It's a ladder map. It's a pro league map. We're going into game one. Samsung versus KT Rolster. Reality versus TY. Let's do this. SK Telecom. Down here in the south on merry-go-round, the Terran player in the pink for Samsung Galaxy Con. It is reality. The top right in red for KT Rolster. It's Taeyang, aka TY. In his Brood War days, he was known as Baby. There's a sign for him. Yeah, Taeyang is the word for son in both uh, Korean and Chinese comes from the Chinese, and uh, they had a little sun drone on there yep. for Tam. Indeed. Pretty cool. They, I love the, the drawings they put on those signs, actually. They spend Pretty a lot detailed. of time on it. It's like their job here is to basically dance and like cheer everybody on and get everybody going and hyped up, but they actually do a lot of extra stuff. Um, very cool. Yeah, they're very talented. They've got a lot of skills. Uh, dancing is one of them. We're still not sure if they're dancers. They, they could, could be. be dancers. It's possible. Uh, I've been thinking about it a lot. I'm mulling no, it over. No conclusions just yet. Considering the pros and cons. Well, we're going to have the uh, line between these two players be the right side of this triangle. And oh, he's got a lollipop. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what's he doing oh, with boy. that? They caught him, man. He's in the audience sucking on a lollipop. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize him. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't actually like get a good look at his face, but I'm sure he's like a former pro player. That he I had just a cool recognize. haircut. Yeah, he might have just popped back from the military or something. Yeah. Um, well, as it is right now, we have a CC first for TY, whereas a standard gas opening for Reality will almost certainly be popping out a Reaper to get some scouting information with that, see how much damage he gets done. Yeah. Or it's not really damage, or how much information he can obtain, and then maybe get some damage done on the way out. And if you recall, uh, the build that TY is doing is the same one that Maru did against Flash, except that his CC was in the base. So, a little True. bit more greedy. See what reality goes for here. Goes for a Marine first. Yeah, so actually not going to be doing Reapers, yeah. at least not initially, waiting for a little bit more gas to come up. So, looks to be doing one Marine into... CC and a Reaper, probably. He could also add a factory. That would be pretty old school Wings of Liberty style. Let's see what he decides to do here. Looks like he's going to go for it. He yeah. has the supply to make a Reaper. He doesn't make it. Actually, throws down a reactor. Yeah, old school style here. Not the, the factory I was expecting, but he'll be getting a lot of Marines out early. Which I don't really like. Oh, caught you doing a selfie! Oh, how embarrassing. <laughs> That's all right. It's okay. It's a good place to take a selfie. Yeah. You should put the screen behind you, though. It looks a little bit cooler. Yeah. Um, Take it with your favorite player. That's cool, too. They're like the capture that was just hoping Flash comes out today. <laughs> Please lose one game, TY, and then we'll see Flash no matter what. That's so funny. Our team's if you think about it, there are definitely KT fans, or rather Flash fans, who are like hoping someone on KT loses. It's true. It's well, funny I mean, to think of. It's, it's funny because, yeah, you're right. They With with only one player losing, they will have that match. If uh, Kate doesn't lose 0-3, that is to say. Now, 
the two Marines here do deny the scout, but he was able to see there's no command star on the low ground. That that much is is aware for TY. All the differences in these builds, of course, being that there's a much later tech coming out right now for TY. He has you know more Marines coming out here, a lot faster SV production, and there's Sojung the translator. And there she went again. She's gone now, but. <laughs> There she was. Showing up for a very brief moment of time. Very contradictory to what we usually do here at Pro League. Very long camera shots, very awkward, but yeah, good work today. And normally she's not on camera. Normally she's uh, just hidden back here. Thus, you guys don't even know if she's really there or not. <laughs> like she could, could be one of us with a girl voice. She could one actually. One of those voice changers. She could be like hanging from the ceiling like a monkey off one of those lights with a microphone doing it. You guys wouldn't even know. Oh, on cancel there. Not going to be going for Banshee Tech after all. Interesting. So that's uh, obviously now no longer scouted. So we'll see if Reality responds, or rather, excuse me, uh, TY responds with you know any overreaction. He's probably going to make turrets. Doesn't hurt to do that even later on, depending on what sort of composition your opponent goes for. And uh, if he makes a Viking first, that's kind of annoying. But uh, based on what he's seen, pretty reasonable. I like what a reality's going for here. He's got a bunch of Marines in this medevac. He's got Hellions near the Watchtower. Could uh, go for a drop in the main as well as poking at the front with the Hellions. Uh, could, you know, start to put on the pressure, start to do a little bit of a harass here. And uh, we'll see what he gets out of it. It seems like is very, very prepared here. He's got a SCV. Look at this. He sees the scout right now. And the reality is going to get the SCV, but, you know, the SCV has done his job. I don't think any more damage is going to come in here. Yeah, he needs to get out of there. Neither player having stim just yet is pretty annoying. The tight wall here is going to deny these Hellions. Yep, he there might it is. be able to break through, but I don't think it's worth it to try. Ooh, loses a Hellion there. Yeah, I mean, even even if he wanted to try, he would have to, you know, the, the SCVs would come down for the repair anyway. It would be very, very hard. Got to be careful here. Doesn't want to take too much damage. Lost a Marine. Gets an SCV. Boosts out. Double Cloak is on the way, by the way, for both players. Meaning that we're going to have Banshee versus Banshee. So a bit of a delayed Banshee tech from Reality. Trying to catch his opponent off guard. And TY, of course, going into it, doing the, the same sort of idea. TY does have two turrets finishing up right now. It's going to help him against the Banshee, but also against any further drops that Reality tries to throw on him. And I'd say at this point, we've kind of equalized with both players' builds. Neither player really getting a massive lead here. Yeah, very, very equal. I mean, you can see they're exactly equal in workers and just a couple more army supply for TY. So very, very similar here. TY is going to throw down an extra command center as well as Reality, actually, at the same time. So both these players, again, just very, very equal. Reality is going to come in here and drop these Hellions. How much damage can they do? Fighting against the Marines, not getting much damage. They're killing some of these Marines, but losing a couple of the Hellions. Not really worth it there for him. Yeah. No. By the way, back at home for reality, he did continue a few more Marines. Just wants to be safe, it looks like. But it looks to be that he's going into a mech composition, something we've seen him have great success with in the past. Not in this matchup, but in the TVZ matchup. Similar principles do apply. Starts a second uh, factory and loses a Banshee. No! Two hit points left on that Banshee. Barely escapes. Oh. TY not the perfect micro that he needed. He actually uh, stutter stepped up a little bit. And if he was uh, a little bit closer, just one more shot off on one of those Marines would have gotten it. Unfortunate, but no damage on that Banshee, so it's okay. Well, let's see how this one plays out. This is going to be interesting. I'm not sure if we've had, I think we had maybe one or two TVTs. It's hard to remember because TVTs are so rare here at Pro League, but this is actually going to be Bio versus Mech, which is, is not, you know, I, I believe we've seen Bio versus Bio and, bio and Mech versus Mech, but not a lot of Bio versus Mech. It's, uh, I, it's going to be an interesting match. It's my favorite version because yeah, me too. it's the clash of two completely viable compositions uh, that both have glaring weaknesses, but also very powerful strengths. Uh, and the weakness, of course, of mech is its immobility. It's easy to drop a mech player, and it's easy to circumvent his army. Another weakness of mech, which is perhaps uh, even more damning, is actually that... If you lose your army for any reason, you get out of position, your tanks are unseized, rebuilding it is expensive and probably not going to happen. The opposite happens to bio, or the same thing happens to the opposite composition, bio, very cheap to remake, very mobile. You're probably not going to suffer a whole lot from being out of position because, you know, unless you're walking into a siege tank line, poor Marine King, then yes. you're probably not going to lose your entire army uh, when you're not paying attention for any sort of reason or you get caught off guard. Yeah. 
One of my favorite things watching this matchup is watching how the bio player just tries to break this, like, you know, very immobile but very, very strong, like, immovable wall of the mech defense. He just, like, tries to drop in many different locations, tries to pick off a tank here, you know, a raven here, whatever he can, maybe do some damage to the Banshee here and there. And it's, it's very fun to see, for me at least, the bio player uh, just, you know, squeaking in and out of little corners of the, the mech player's base. Well, let's see uh, how he can squeak around here. He's got two medevacs full of units, well, two medevacs worth of units he could lift and drop into the main. It looks like he's trying to go over here and check for any spotters and maybe even attack the third base by ground or force some ground units there. And then when he gets spotted, he can just lift into the main base, hoping there's no Vikings. There's the scan. He sees there's an army there. Probably just going to pick up and try to go into the main. There is a turret ring there, so it's going to be a bit tough. A lot of scans going down, as you guys can see. Checks over here. Sees the turret ring is not yet complete, but he's got a few Vikings and a Raven. But also, it's important to see that because he knows that the possibility of an air switch is underway as well. I like the choice to take a fourth command center because he still has that more mobile composition. It's going to be hard for Reality to make a push happen to, to go over and punish that. Yeah, definitely. One thing I find interesting right now is the double armory of TY. I mean, we were saying how he was going bio, but I don't, you know, besides these. Uh, Marines that he's making. He, he kind of got like a little bit of upgrades for the Marines, but then he went double armory and now he's getting tanks, he's getting Vikings as well. He's kind of going mixed here. So not full bio. Yeah, that's true. And uh, yeah, that's a really good point. I wonder how because the thing is when you go for bio, oftentimes well, there's a difference between bio and Marine tank. He added some Marauders which made it look to be he was going for a more bio-oriented composition, but then he went into now pure Marines, and now he's cut Marines out entirely. He's going to have 1-1 one, one Marines, and he's going to have a few Thors and Siege Tanks. The Siege Tanks, of course, necessary uh, to deal with his opponent's Siege Tanks and for zoning. The Thors are going to be useful at dealing with air units, uh, you know, any sort of Banshee, Viking composition, um, or even potentially to help out with battle cruisers later. It's just important to have a, a Thor or two in your army when you're up against someone who has air control against you, so you really need to be careful about that. Yeah. No. Nice pick off by TY. He had a, a very nice spotter Banshee over towards the left of the map. Just to scout for Hellion runbys and stuff like that that could happen. Well, hold that dog. A Hellion's coming down the middle here. It looks like Reality wants to go for a push. He has the blue flame, but a lot of damage being done by TY onto those Hellions right now. Yeah, I, I, you know, I don't really like TY's chances here. His composition has a lot of variety. Um, but variety may be the spice of life, but it's not necessarily the best way to build a TVT composition because, I mean, let's talk about units right now. In his composition, right now, he has one Thor, one Banshee, five Vikings, ten Siege Tanks, three Marauders, and 34 Marines. There's a little bit of mobility there, but not a lot. Not a lot of backbone in the army either. You know, he's got, say, you know, ten Siege Tanks, but there are 17 Hellbats that are going to love to drop on top of the Siege Tanks. They're also not going to have too bad of a time fighting against Marines. And uh, they're just going to turn around and fight it right now. S tanks on the high ground, and TY, I'm sorry to tell you, Matt, I don't think this attack is going to do a whole lot. Now his army's cut off here, and Reality's in a great position to cut off his fourth base. He's already sieged up, and this is going to be a really, really tough position for TY to recover from. He's forced to lift that base. He doesn't have an army that's large enough in bio to attack uh, directly in a counterattack. You know, we could do, like, pick off a siege tank here. Had he had, you know, five or six medevacs worth of units, that would be a different story. But his army is, like, too weak on the on the backbone side of it, but not strong enough on its mobility side either. He's only yeah. got 34 Marines to work with here. He's going to try to catch some tanks. You could say he's trying to be a jack of all trades right now of a yeah. turn. And, uh, you know, right now he's doing a decent job. He's just, just picking off, like, one tank here and there. But I think that's more just reality just allowing him to do that because he's he's got like one tank in the middle of the map doing nothing um but like you said i mean i think the idea here was for ty to do these counter attacks but it's just not enough units to do enough damage and the reality is doing a really nice job positioning his mech army right now and that's helping him in uh in wonders right now yeah even that one viking being so annoying right now two widow mines here as well to block that cc anything that comes nearby is going to regret it the viking does get picked off but uh Looks like he killed one Widow Mine. The second one is still there. Again, Reality with this huge mech army is just going to dart in here now. Using Hellbats to tank. PDDs go down. Banshees with the cloak. And TY, he needs to hold strong here, but I'm not sure he has enough right now, Brendan. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like it at all. I mean, even in the air, Reality is doing so, so well. He's got the air advantage right now, and he has killed a lot of 2 by stuff. These Vikings right now picking off one by one. The Thor is doing decent damage of 2Y onto those Vikings. Reality has to be careful of that. You know, he's 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 been able to, so far, hold on. His base has been re retaken over here. Widow Mine actually is, will be cleaned up to the top left. Uh, you know, I'm just checking out a bunch of things on the map right now. TY's army is bigger, but is it better? That's the question. It's it's hard to say. He forces now Reality to turn around. He's got a sensor tower set up right now as well. And finally, TY looks like he may have an opportunity to use this Marine Force for a counterattack. That planetary, how strong is it going to be against pure Marine? I'd say pretty strong. Yeah. I mean, especially if you get the repair on that as well. TY's going to come in here. He's got the scan now. He knows this is going on. But with that uh, planetary, it's going to be well defended. I mean, these Marines are just worth it right now. Yeah. He's just having a tough time actually breaking through. Maybe he can get this refinery, uh, which is important against a mech composition. But getting behind that mineral line would also be pretty sweet. And uh, that one siege tank can almost just fight the Marines by himself. Yeah, especially siege stuff like that. Easy peasy. Easy yep. pickings. Marines just taking it, man. Not even running. Well, Reality starts now with the plus two for his mech units. Both players right now, uh, you know, starting their upgrades. Like, okay, so TY has 1-1. One, one. Versus already the plus two of reality, so he doesn't have any plating. That includes his Vikings, uh, mind you. That would be very useful against Thor shots on those Vikings. The air control is a big problem for Ty as well. You know, it's hard for him to actually deal with these banshees. He's going to try to force his way up here. Reality, that is, with his Hellbats just not even putting them in medibacks and uh, throws a lot of them away here. Not so sure about that one. Yeah, uh, he lost a lot of his Hellbats, and he only killed about four or five tanks. I'm not sure, you know, maybe in Minerals and Gas it's okay, but he's lost his Hellbat force a lot. This is this is nice what he's doing here, TY. He's going to force his uh, command center to go away. This one tank being a bully, going to push him back. You know, TY, he, he's been stuck with a bunch of these Marines, and he continues to make them. He's actually making Marauders now as well. Maybe, I, I think he wants to bolster that kind of harassing force a little bit, because reality so far... To be honest, like he hasn't really been responding to it that well. And if TY notices this and he's like, oh, well, if I add Marauders in here, I can snipe buildings, I can go into your mineral lines, I can go into your tech and snipe buildings in that way. And that might be the way that TY uh, gains a significant advantage later on. Yeah, it could be the way, man. Uh, you know, oftentimes the player who goes for the bio composition early on has the challenge to, to transition into that air. It's a tricky way to get back into the game. It's a way where you can just surprise your opponent with BCs if you've been able to mine from more ba bases, build a bank because you have the more mobile army. It's hard for the mech army to actually kill your bases one by one, so you build this bank. And the problem really is that Reality already controls the air. He's getting more uh, Ravens right now. The word uh, slipped my mind. He's getting more Ravens, which means more PDDs. But TY is, is, is in similar counts, and the air battle, I think, may actually be the deciding factor in this game because uh, ground armies are losing their relevancy slowly over time as uh, once the, the game is controlled by air, siege tanks, how useful are they? Uh, bio forces are still okay, and there's the fusion core going down actually first for TY as well as a second armory, so he's going to get that plus three on its own before he gets any plating, but we'll be able to start adding additional upgrades pretty soon. Yeah, uh, I was surprised that Ty, or rather, Reality was letting Ty keep the space because he he could move his whole army over here. Ty doesn't really have position in the top of the map. Actually, Reality has a much better position, so I feel like Reality could actually take that base down if he wanted to. Um, seems to be a little bit more passive though, as Ty moves the bulk of his army over here to defend. Yeah, We're gonna throw down a sensor tower as well. Notice also the turret rings and siege tank rings that are being set up all over the map for reality. He's trying to anaconda him here. He's got so many rings set up here that it's going to be basically impossible for TY to send any drops across. Battle cruisers will be able to break the ring, but it's going to take a long time. So this is a, a technique that reality uses here to trap TY and part of the army, and he has to basically walk through this slow uh, of these turrets or or the siege tanks to go anywhere. 
And even if he breaks through, which he can do easily if he attacks one location, it leaves him open somewhere else. And when you have this early lead in Minerals, as we saw Reality have here, there's that, that bank with the composition that does not die, then you can do this. Now, he's actually going to attack directly here. This is all about PDDs and Seeker Missiles. He chooses to attack Siege Tanks with Seeker Missiles. An interesting choice. And this actually may give TY the fight he needs. He's got the better concave right now. PDD's being launched on both sides, and also some Seeker Missiles here. The Seeker Missiles doing so much damage to the Vikings of reality right now. TY even dropping a mule here to try to bug out these tanks, to try to make them hit each other right now. And, you know, TY taking a huge advantage in the air right now. He is in a very good spot. 23 to 6 Vikings with those Seeker Missiles. Even the Seeker Missiles that hit TY's Vikings were on top of the Siege Tanks, thus further damaging them, which is why I think the Mule Drops are a great choice. Uh, TY is able to now take that air control, and with a bank that he's built, make three battle cruisers at a time. He will have the plus three for those BCs very soon. He already has the plus two plating. So when it comes to long game scenarios, it's looking pretty good for TY right now because not only does he have control of the air, is he ahead in supply, but he also has the better bank. And I think the reality was really banking on taking a more cost-efficient engagement there. The choice to use the Seeker missiles on the Siege tanks was certainly an interesting one. I, you know, It almost begs the question, did he misclick trying to click Vikings when he's clicking too quickly? Because he can get those Siege tanks for free, but that's a lot of energy used, man. Yep, for one Siege tank. you got to think about it. I mean, the Vikings are going to bunch up. You can hit a bunch of them at once, but you're going to hit one Siege tank if you throw it at one siege tank, so I mean, I feel it's like it's not very efficient. The PDD is even going to give you much more value. Uh, now, we have already, let me check, weapon refits ready for reality. Looks like TY is going behemoth reactor first, and the way that's going to line up is battle cruisers will actually get that additional energy as they pop out, which is going to become a little bit important for him. Um, but consider that it also delays his Yamato, so there's obviously a pretty big trade-off there. It's, you know, arguable which one is actually the better choice. Yeah. Something our observer pointed out, by the way, earlier was that TY has the much better gas mining right now. He did a very good job of getting the gas first at that southeast base, and that has allowed him to build this huge gas bank that you guys see. He's able to max out and still have this huge bank, whereas Reality is struggling hard right now to max out. And that gives TY the, the massive advantage in BCs right now. He's making two at a time. He's got four to one right now. And he has the minerals to make even more. Minerals and gas, I should say. Yeah, and, and that's that's really important because not only does he mine it first, but he's got it for the bank now. And he's removing a turret ring and making it his own right now. Dropping SCVs with uh, medevacs. He's trying to push his way around here. We're actually watching this game transition not into a game of chess, but actually into a game of go, of who can block which squares. Now, 76 harvesters to 72. These harvester counts will decrease rapidly over the next few minutes as they start to realize uh, or decide that they don't really need that supply to be used here. A lot of siege tanks caught off guard. No turrets here. Can he force a fight, though? That's really scary. There's a lot of Vikings in the air right now for reality, and he has eight, yes, eight Vikings. That's twice as many as TY has. Make sure he doesn't use them on siege tanks this time. Now nine, in fact. Ravens, nine Ravens, Ravens. Excuse me. Oh my God. I was like, okay. Ravens, uh, I'm yeah. so sorry. No, it's fine. Um, yeah, I, I want to see them start to sacrifice their SMEs as well. Uh, just get those guys down. They need to start thinking about, you know, the, getting those banks up and then just sacrificing their SMEs to get the higher army supply. Right now, TY is doing a very, very good job of forcing Reality's tanks back with his BCs. I mean, this is the advantage you get when you get these BCs out first. You're just able to, you know, you're just able to rule the air. You can come over here, you can kill all these missile turrets that are building, kill all the SCVs. Look at those three tanks over there. They're all going to go down. There's no protection. People have really figured out how to babysit their their uh, BCs because if you can't do that, the BCs can be so difficult to actually decide to invest in because Vikings will always crush BCs in a straight-up fight, but with Raven support and your own Vikings nearby, as long as the BCs don't get too far ahead, it's pretty easy to protect them. And they do some of the best DPS in the game, especially when they have three, three upgrades, which will be finished in just a second for TY. The plating, on the other hand, for Rally is almost uh, just now started, or it had just started for plus two. It's so only two, so he's a whole, almost two sets of upgrades behind. In a second, he will be in the armor, but it's gonna take him a long time to catch up. 
So let's see how much uh, damage TY can get here if he decides to try to take an engagement, just try to force a few pickoffs. The lack of Ravens for him is what I'm most worried about. 13 to 4 now. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting to see Reality do this. He's like, okay, you, you got the BCs out first. You have the higher bank. I'm just going to go full on Raven, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna try to beat you in this way. Right now, I, I want to see Ty also take that base at the top left. He's pretty much secured it. Well, actually, it looks like Reality is doing a good job of clearing that out again and making that turret ring his own again. <laughs> Which is funny, he's making that block his own once again. And he, he wants to come over here and kill this base as well. I think this is smart. He could have done this a little bit earlier, I think, as well. Yeah, but, you uh, were talking about that. I, I think you're absolutely right. Now, he's going to come over here and actually just use tank mode on these siege tanks. And like Sergeant Hammer here the storm, it's actually pretty good uh, to fight in tank mode against small targets. All right, here we go. This could be it. Three Sicker Missiles lined up. It gets out of range. They'll all be canceled here, rolling on the ground. But that was a close call. Now, T1 needs to be so careful. If he can continue to take these engagements where he can avoid the Seeker Missiles, then that would be a good choice for him. A few Seeker Missiles being queued up on all those BCs. They split pretty nicely here. Who's going to get the better trade? It looks like the answer is actually reality. He's going to take the air fight here, forcing those Vikings back. And oh no, he may only have one BC here, but with that BC, he's going to be able to push back every last siege tank. The problem being here, that TY has a massive bank, 2,300, 3,900 in resources right now. And with that, he will be able to rebuild his army quickly. And in TBT, you have a lot of time to do so. Yeah, he does. I don't know if you guys saw, but he was making eight Vikings at a time, as well as one BC, maybe two BCs, and a Raven. So he is he has that bank, and he's going to be making a ton of air units. He's got two Thors on the way as well to support it. Actually making three Ravens at a time now. After seeing that fight, he's Four. like, oh. I need some Ravens of my own, yep. actually. Four Ravens now, six Vikings. Continue to make a few siege tanks as he will need some ground presence and also one BC. Uh, that was just way too much damage output on the Seeker Missiles. And, and split as he may, and the Seeker Missiles were even queued up on BCs, which if the Seeker Missile lands on a BC in itself, that hitbox there is uh, mostly hitting the BC. You can still just see how much brutal damage it can do. Now, a few SCVs actually do get sent to their death under these siege tank fire, but I think for TY, especially considering where his bank is right now, he's very happy that he can relinquish some of that supply to get more expensive army units, those tech units, into his composition. Yeah. You guys see there the unit tab. Both of these players, only one BC each. I feel like this is, after seeing that fight, it's like it's not really a race to see who can get more BCs. It's like who can get more Vikings and Ravens. And right now, TY is winning that fight by far. Reality has the the advantage in tanks. He's 17 to 10, but you know we've seen it time and time and again as we go later and later in TBT. Whoever has the better air army is actually just going to win the air army, or win the air battle rather, and then your tanks are alone. They have no protection, and you can just kill the tanks. Somebody we've seen stylistically really stick on the BCs in the late late game and still win games is Dream. I feel like he has some of the best air control, best ba BC babysitting in late game TBT, which isn't that relevant actually in your career to have such a skill right now with the current meta and how few Terran players we're seeing in these leagues in Korea. But still, uh, you know, you can make a BC composition work if you can babysit them, if you can protect them, and if your Raven count isn't abysmal compared to your opponents as we saw in the last fight. So you have to be very careful with just how you build this composition. Now finally, TY has got a pretty nice siege up position on this base. He's basically stopped mining here. And uh, the planetary can't lift, but even if it could, he would actually be taken out so quickly by those Vikings. 1BC is pushing his way forward here slowly but steadily. Okay. Look at this. Like, TY is flying. He wants a battle right now. He's like, I see our two air armies, and I have the better one. I want to fight right now. And if reality is not going to fight, TY will be very happy with that. He can just push back that mining base, like you said. He can gain more advantage right in the middle of the map, more map control. This is a nice little push out of reality here. He's got a Thor over here with a bunch of tanks. Going to take out some of this turret ring and uh, a couple tanks as well. Yeah. Well, numbers game. 34 Vikings. Yeah. 34 to 15. 18 siege tanks on the ground. How important is that really in a, in a battle where air armies are much more important? Yeah, he blocks the Thors, but the Vikings are still going strong. He has to be careful about those turrets. Turrets are so important right now. The Thors are like barely able to get under there and clear them. I love these types of games. We just don't get to see this anymore right now in yeah. Korea. And when you do, you, you you remember that actually at a time, Terran versus Terran was the most important matchup to be good at. And it was like 
in art. It was my favorite matchup for the longest time. We, we stopped seeing it, so it it was just like a bit of a a weird rare matchup that I wouldn't say I was, you know, enjoyed all too much because it felt like people had been rusty. But these two definitely knowing exactly what they're doing here. Now, here we go. He's again trying to force a fight with his better air army. And what uh, Reality is trying to do is bait him back into a more defensive position, but he still doesn't have enough. That BC lags behind too slow. And, and he's know, starting to lose Ravens here. Yeah, the Ravens are slow as well. He's got to drop these PDDs as well. He's losing some energy. And TY is just bullying him right now. I mean, he's trying to, Reality's trying to draw him into a bad position, but he's like, okay, I'm just going to drop my auditors on your base, and you're not going to mind gas from there. And that is really, really big. I mean, you can see right now, uh, TY is down in gas, but he definitely has a better gas mining right now because he's shutting down the gas mining at that one base. Yeah, he's also killed a few siege tanks with uh, seeker missiles on the, his way back home. Now, five BCs at a time, and he has five right now. He's going to have ten BCs. After he's, he saw the air army reality, he's like, yeah, he's, he's, like, he's I making a kill move. He's like, okay. Exactly, exactly. You're exactly yeah. right. He's like, I need these to break the line. Now, once I have these... What are you going to do to stop me? Because I know you can't afford to build a composition that's better than the one I have right now. It's not going to happen. I am controlling your bases. Lift that orbital, I dare you. <laughs> into, into how many Vikings in this case? 27? Thank you very much. So, now reality has the better Viking count. You know what I'd really like to see maybe, it's, it's really hard to make a choice like this, is maybe some more Thors. For, for reality something because what he's got right now is never going to catch up and now he's losing more siege tanks over here the entire map is being controlled by ty he's fought his way back into this one and i don't see reality clawing his way back out it's going to take a miracle it's going to take a better than perfect engagement look at this he even leaves the weakened bc there's so much atg damage to those scvs he's going to kill so many of them so quickly and he's like yeah whatever it's not it doesn't need to fight just yep. gonna drop down that damage. I'd wish he'd go over to the gas actually first, kill those gas uh, CVs. It's just so so important. He's gonna want that gas. It's just even if this goes on later and later, he's gonna want it. But here it comes. Here's the big engagement. And reality is not confident to take this. And as he's not confident, Ty moves in. and He says, "Thank you. I'm gonna eat a couple of these uh, siege tanks, some Thors as well." He is retaking control of the high ground with siege tanks. Ty needs a, or rather, reality needs a plan here. And I, I really just don't know what, you know, what, what is he going to do to change the game? You know, dropping mules to steal your opponent's minerals, <laughs> you know, is, is, uh, is one idea. But actually, those weren't even his. I, the SCVs just got bugged out there for a second. I got confused. But he has no money. He has the worst composition. It looks like he's tried to make a few Hellions here because they don't cost any gas to try to limit his opponent's mining. He's going to kill a lot of mules. Yep, he's still got the blue flame from earlier, so he killed a bunch of mules. But it's, it's just a little, little advantage. It's too little too late, and he's dying a slow and painful death. Reality, one of the best turtlers that we've ever seen with Mech in StarCraft II, especially in 2014. But when your opponent has the better composition, he's going to eventually get out here. Now, we've seen this transition before. We've seen TY himself actually execute this. Can this actually turn the game around? It's not going to be easy. Oh, wow. You know, he actually does have the burrow upgrade for them, too, so they are going to be able to get down and dirty pretty quick. Yeah. We'll see. He needs to be very careful with those, though, because they are his last chance. They're a very inexpensive way to do damage. Yeah, and he, even though TY has gone mainly air, he still has seven tanks, whereas Reality has none. Uh, TY has done a very good job of cleaning up all the tanks of Reality. Reality just play, replaced them with those uh, Widow Mines, just wants to win that air battle first. But, I mean, just uh, look at how meticulous Reality has to be to move across the map, how careful he has to be. He's like, I can only kill this with a BC, but I only have one BC, so I had to PDD that turret to kill a turret with one BC. That's how slowly he has to move across the map, because if his BCs move forward just an inch too far, kiss goodnight. Now, these, these Widow Mines can't stick around. They're not able to control this ground. And with the siege tanks here, the siege tanks will clean them up before they can get into position. And that's all that TY needs to do is to make sure that he moves forward slowly, carefully, and safely right now with this army. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm feeling for reality here. I don't think he can take this one. He, he, he I think he has one mining base of gas. Uh, whereas TY has that one uh, kind of to the east side of the, the one that's all the way to the west yeah. up on top. And then he has the one that's on the bottom as well. So he has two bases over there with four mining gases. 
and a bunch of minerals as well if he wants it. Looks like this is where Reality wants to try to take some of this gas or take some of those minerals at that base all the way over there. And I think that's a, a decent idea because TY's whole army was over towards the west side and it's going to bring it all the way over to the east side here. I'm just not sure if he's going to be able to defend it. The army of KT Rolster is, well, or, or TY is, well, hold that thought. We may actually have the engagement. He's going for it! Widowmind's running in, secret missiles run amok here. This is not a concave, ladies and gentlemen. This is a surround by TY. Way too much firepower here. And that's it, GG. At the end of the day, his army costs more than like an entire Apple store of products, man. That was a super expensive composition that he built there at the end of the day. Way too strong, winning that one key air battle taking that fight and then just pushing his advantages over and over and over again with that bank that he built. Yeah. What an enjoyable game, actually. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll say really it again. Man. I'll say it again. I mean, we don't see TBT a lot here, uh, but that was very, very refreshing. Both these guys playing very nice strategic uh, battles here. I mean, TBT, the matchup that is most strategic in terms of positioning, and both these guys just giving us a very nice treat there. Uh, you know, very, very awesome game to watch. Dude, I'm telling you, uh, that map makes an excellent TBT oh, as well. Yes. That was like, ooh, I hope we get to see that again soon. We we saw that map actually the last time we saw TBT. That was the same map that uh, Flash played against Maru on.